O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Praise and thanks to God. This morning dawns, dear Savior, my praise and thanks I bring for your rich grace and favor. With songs of joy I sing, though seated on your throne, you still. Paul was a mentor and a spiritual father to Timothy, but also to another young pastor named Titus. Titus was a Gentile, probably from Antioch, and he was an companion with Paul and Barnabas to Jerusalem when they brought assistance to the Christians in Judea during a great famine. That's recorded in Acts chapter 11. Titus eventually became a pastor, and he was pastor on the island of Crete. A difficult assignment, for the Cretans were a little rough, as we find out in the Bible. But Titus was encouraged by Paul to still do the work of God. Paul wrote a letter, like he did two letters to Timothy, to Titus, and he begins the letter with this. Paul, a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to further the faith of God's elect and their knowledge of the truth that leads to godliness, in the hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time, and which now, at his appointed season, he has brought to light through the preaching entrusted to me by the command of God our Savior. To Titus, my true son, in our common faith, grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. The reason I left you in Crete was that you might put in order what was left unfinished and appoint elders in every town as I directed you. An elder must be blameless, faithful to his wife, a man whose children believe and are not open to the charge of being wild and disobedient. Since an overseer manages God's household, he must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not pursuing dishonest gain. Rather, he must be hospitable, one who loves what is good, who is self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firmly to the trustworthy message as it has been taught, so that he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. In St. Paul's letters to Timothy and this letter to Titus, Paul gives the qualifications of what it is to be a pastor. He needs to be above reproach because if he has a, a sin that is so obvious and so public and so devastating, it's not like it can't be forgiven, but it can get in the way of the proclamation of the gospel. No pastor is sinless, of course, but we don't want anything to get into the way of the gospel. And so notice what St. Paul says also uh, in Timothy's letter, letters to Timothy and Titus. He can't be a lover of money. He can't be a womanizer. He can't be, he can't be a jerk, basically. Why? Not because those things can't be forgiven. Not because the pastor has to be better than everybody else. That's just not the case. 
But those things can get in the way of the gospel. I always thought when it comes time to making sure that your pastor is paid, that you shouldn't give him too much money because that can be a distraction, and you shouldn't pay him too less of money because that can be a distraction too. We want people to go into the ministry because they have the love for the truth and love for people, not because they're trying to gain anything at all. There's other qualifications. He has to be apt to teach. He has to be hospitable. He has to control his own family. Again, all of those things are for the proclamation of the gospel, not about the person. One qualification we don't find in Titus, but, but Paul had mentioned this to Timothy, was that he can't be a new convert. And Titus and Timothy, they were seasoned a little bit. They carried uh, some of the burdens of Paul's missionary work. They, they were a part of the debates about what is truth when Paul and Peter were going back and forth about the gospel and if people had to follow the Old Testament laws anymore. They were charitable. They carried these offerings to the poor people suffering a famine in Jerusalem. They were seasoned. Oh, I know converts, wonderful. There's nothing beautiful than those first moments when you realize that you're at peace with God in the world and the, the grass is greener and the sky is just a little bit bluer. But then come struggles. And sometimes people who are on fire for Jesus right away, they can lose that zeal when the first round of struggle comes their way, when they realize we're still sinners living in a sinful world. And so you need to be seasoned a little bit. You need to be not a new convert, but somebody who's gone through the ringer a little bit. And that is what Paul did for Timothy and Titus. He mentored them and got them through these tough times. And then he said, here you go. I want you to now shepherd these people as I shepherded you. But notice how St. Paul really begins this letter. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about preaching him. It's not about the man. It's not about who he is and his talents or lack of talent. It's about Jesus Christ. And a good pastor does what John the Baptist did, just points to the Lamb of God and says, Behold, the one who takes away the sin of the world.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power, and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.